already gone over how to find limits using graphs and how to find them numerically using our tables and seeing what happens as it gets closer and closer to this point or closer and closer to this number. So the third way we're going to look at limits, we're going to solve or evaluate our limits algebraically. And this is generally the most favored option if ever possible because our answers are exact. We're not going to be looking at a graph and trying to see what's happening up here, what's happening over here, how's the table going over here, how's the table going over here. We're just going to get a number. And sometimes you have to do a little bit of math to it, some little jiggery pokery to get it so that we can make it work right. And we'll explore that in other videos. But what it comes down to at the end is we're going to just use direct substitution as much as possible. And this is exactly what it sounds like. We're just going to substitute in 3 for x and see if we can get a number. Now, if we can't get a number, we've got to do something else or the limit might not exist. But let's give it a shot here. So we write this as the limit as x approaches 3 of x plus 4 over x minus 2 equals. And instead of an x, we'll put the 3. So 3 plus 4, instead of the x in the denominator, we put the 3, 3 minus 2, 7 over 1, which is 7. So we say that our limit as x approaches 3 of x plus 4 over x minus 2 equals 7. And that's it. Now, if we looked at a graph, we'd see that it's from the left it approached 7 and from the right it approached 7. And if we looked at a table, we'd see that from the left it approached 7 and the right it approached 7. But we know that the rational function here, we substitute it in. It works. We didn't get a 0 in the denominator. We didn't get any funny stuff going on, as we will later. We'll take a look at that later on. But we just plug the number in, substitute the number in. We get an answer. We're good to go.